go. Hey everybody, Ryan Engineer bringing on another StarCraft commentary. Once again, Kenny alongside me, so it's going to be epic, epic, epic. First game, Bisu did just very good, solid game. Took 815 out, 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 and now he's going to be facing another Zerg. None other than Hoja. KTF, one game behind, so they're going to hope that this new hopeful of theirs manages to take Bisu out. So this is going to be on destination. Get all the details out of here. 11 o'clock in, I think it was yellow. It's going to be Hoja, Zerg at 5 o'clock, Bisu in orange. They just had to get us these awesome colors that look exactly the friggin' same on the minimap. So, oh well. So it's just going to come down to very important here how Hoja plays against Bisu. Whether he manages to prevent Bisu's awesome, awesome style of harassment play. So, all in all, Kenny, what do you think? Well, man, uh, Destination's an interesting map, and I think that if any map um, that Zerg could put a decent game up against Bisu would be Destination. It's still a very hard map. Um, I think Protoss is still very good on this map, although it's nice for... Um, it, it is nice for taking your third as it's on a high ground, but uh, at the same time, that works in the same favor for Bisu. So, really... I think it's going to. I think that it could be a close game. I think obviously again, Bisu is the favorite. Uh, Hojo is a very good Zerg though, and I'd say that realistically, he has an actually very good chance at beating Bisu. And again, you're going to see that the same thing we saw last game with the overpool. And uh, this is again is just to prevent Bisu from getting any more of that early economic advantage, as well as maybe put any pressure that they want to early on against Bisu. Uh, on this map especially, since it's a little bit harder than, say, the last map we saw on Andromeda. On Andromeda. Um, so yeah, it, I think that it's good to do the Overpool versus Bisu, force him to make a couple cannons, and not get too far ahead as far as that early expansion goes, as he's the master at that. Um, one thing to mention, though, about this map is that um, contains are, are somewhat nice on this map, and... Uh, you, I have seen Muta from time to time on this map be pretty useful, so it's going to be interesting. But, again, I'm, I'm not going to, to act like this is the all-famous weird build map, because it's not. I would probably expect to see the same thing we saw last game, um, either Lurkers or Hydra, 5-patch Hydra. You never know, we're just going to have to wait and see um, and stop speculating about it. But it looks like BC is going to maybe just throw down one cannon, perhaps two, and then go for his Nexus. Yep, there's a second cannon, and then we'll see the Nexus shortly. Yep, so BC is just going for the standard fast expand. So, also gonna get his scout killed eventually, kept it alive pretty well last game. Uh, although he tried to get a second scout when he got trapped. Uh, nope, not quite getting himself trapped. Uh, Hoja also moving a few Zerglings out, apparently gonna see if he can put on some pressure to stay outside of Bisu's base just to, you know, assert some control. It's very important to keep map control on this game, especially as a Zerg and just not allow the Protoss to get too many bases up. If he manages to prevent that, he should be able to actually put up a very good fight against Beast. I'm not going to count this kid out, because I've been surprised before by newbies. Beast who tends to ten occasionally underestimate players that he doesn't know very well that are new on the scene. That has cost him some matches. I still remember him losing against a no-name no toss on his first game after winning the MSL last season. It was friggin' hilarious. Oh, I think Hoja tried to prevent a scout going out, pro going out. No, I don't think he managed to, though. I think Bisu managed to get one probe out there. Also adding a third cannon, as well as a gateway, I believe that is. So now just getting full on, and now just a bunch of Zerglings running around, so we're gonna see Hoja just gonna spot everything. We're gonna see where he actually tries to go from the back. I don't think he has a drone alongside to mine those minerals from the back so he can sneak some forces in. No, he does not. So he's not going to be able to manage to get any Zergans past that. And those Zergans aren't going to get spotted, though. Bisu has a few <laughs> probes that are blocking off Hoja. Desperately he's trying to get through. This. Oh, man. Ah, oh, doing a burrow trick. That's all, apparently, was that something new? I've never seen that done. And meanwhile, he also loses an Overlord alongside. No, this is actually a very... Uh, it's been around for quite a while. And as you can see, you burrow all your lings on top of each other, and then you do exactly what you just did. You unburrow them, and they glitch out through the middles and up into the base. Beautiful move by Hoja. That's some pimpus play shit right there, man. 
Oh my god, that is actually very, very smart. And that threw Bisu completely off, I believe. He lost quite a few probes um, just trying to block that, as well as uh, a few here in his main. Luckily, he does have a Zealot out by now, uh, but really brilliant strategy by Hoja. He did have to spend that extra 100 minerals, 100 gas, but Burrow is very, very useful against Protoss, as you can use it to uh, scout just about everything in the late game and really uh, take out drops or anything. So I got to agree with Hoja. This was a really well thought out and plan strategy I'm sure he had this uh, this strategy and build already set before he even entered the game and uh, I gotta say really really excellent it's good to see something like this from uh, these lower the lower class players that are up and coming because really this is doing a lot of economic damage to Bisu and it's hard to catch Bisu off guard and I think that's exactly what Hoja did and as you can see he's just sniping probe after probe and this slow zealot cannot do anything about it and I think Bisu's got to move his uh, he's either got to move his probes to his natural soon or do a probe drill like he just did and he killed a couple so now the damage is probably going to go down but man that did a lot and a lot more damage than I thought it ever would beautiful strategy by Hoja I know what I'm going to be doing while I cheese people on iCup all day long from now on um, I'm just gonna pick Zerg and go burrow and do that exact same thing every single game thank you Bisu or Hoja I should say thank you Bisu for showing us how much you get raped by it um, but anyways on a different note now we've got the third expansion up for Hoja so he's really in a nice uh, position he did a lot of damage he slowed Bisu down a ton um, as you can see Bisu getting his Stargate up now so he is going to be getting Corsairs out pretty shortly and seeing what's going on with the Zerg and it looks like he's gonna go for a second round of uh, Ling Burrow uh, jumping through those minerals and I gotta say uh, it could work again because Bisu only has one Zealot in his main and I didn't get to catch his natural but he looks like yeah he has one in his natural as well and if he, if he pulls that off again that'd be pretty funny but I think uh, Bisu is one of those guys who learns his lesson losing a Zealot out front so very good play by Hoja so far Ranch and I gotta say dude this guy is proving to us that he is uh, going to throw a good game to Bisu yeah wow surprising play very much so, and apparently gonna go for it again. I'm not sure if Beast was spotted that or not. Tricky, tricky little newbie bastard. Well, not newbie. He probably kick my ass here from here to Sunday, but and Sunday's pretty far away. So, but he's gonna go for this again. Just keeps on stacking, and I don't think Beast knows. Oh, okay, he has put down two cannons inside of his natural, and some of the zerglings are now out. So we're gonna see what he manages to do. Any sort of damage. One of the cannons has morphed in. The second one's gonna morph in shortly. There is one zealot there to help defend. So we're just not gonna be able to move in too too close. Uh, lost one's working there. Beast also not mean all has some Corsairs out there, but they're so late. The Scourge are going to be out in time to meet those. So Hoja's not going to lose any more forces in the air, any more overlords. Uh, trying to do the round. Hoja's trying to at least take out a Zelda before he was okay. Takes down one Zelda and basically burrows his forces to prevent them from dying. So Beast has to be careful at all times. The Scourge, meanwhile, now for Hoja are going to take care of that Corsair. Definitely going to force him away. And Hoja's just playing a perfect control game, forcing Beast to just stand over the those zerglings just to wait for them to pop up which you're probably not going to do for a long long while and beast is just not going to be able to do anything about them for quite a while Wow, just wow, this kid's probably forcing Beast to send so many minerals, so much economy on defenses. Took out two cannons earlier, a bunch of probes, now forcing Beast to put down two cannons, even if he didn't do too much economic damage. Took out a Zealot, but forcing Beast to use all those minerals just on defense has to be bad because Zerglings are just using them in such a cost effective manner. It's like some people say about Terrans, if you know, if you produce a vulture and manage to kill at least one drone, it's almost pretty much cost effective. Don't know if any, everybody agrees with me on that. I don't even know if I agree with some people on that, but that's what some people say. Observatory now out for Beast, he's gonna use that to take care of that. Those burrowed zerglings that are sitting down inside of his base gonna be irritating. Spore colony is being put down by Hoja. He can definitely afford those. Also, apparently thinking of taking down the upper right mineral only. So he's just gonna try to get a bunch of expansions going. He has five hatches already, so he's gonna be producing a lot of forces from that. If he can manage to get a big army, he will be able to put a lot of pressure on Bisu because he in such an economic advantage at this point and Bisu is going to be in trouble but also putting down a little of a dune Bisu as well as has a robotic support which I hadn't noticed earlier so Bisu is going to be forced to go for uh, Reavers <laughs> moving his Rogans meanwhile alongside and forcing Bisu to just stand on their heads so Bisu has a game that he is falling back here and he has to just slowly slowly do some economic damage which of course with the way Hoja has played 
Beaster's not going to be able to do for a while. So until he has those Reavers out there, he's not going to be able to get an advantage here. Hoja on the other side taking down his third gas. So we're going to have a lot of economy here.